All right, everyone, welcome back into another NFL DFS video. Give me touching on the top plays and really everything you need to know for week 13. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, I do want to start with taking a peek at the ownership. We are going to see that Zach Moss is currently the highest projected own on the slate. This is varying between like whatever sites you're looking at. One has it about 50%, another has it about 37%. All in all, he's going to be the highest owned player on the slate. And to me, that is something that does make sense. When we look at Zach Moss, we know why he's a good play. Jonathan Taylor is going to be on this game. And really, we saw this before the season, also against Tennessee, and he had him himself a very good game against Tennessee and the interesting thing with the Colts is they have kind of been matchup proof in a way uh, where who's ever been the RB1 whether it's Zach Moss or Jonathan Taylor each of those two players has done well so to me this is chalked and I'm perfectly fine eating and then we're also going to see that uh, Rashad White currently projected to be chalk as well I don't know if we actually have to get there I'll talk about that in a second here David Njoku pulling in as chalk that's an interesting one to me I don't know if we exactly need to get there and one player I'm kind of surprised it's not pulling in a little bit more ownership or a couple players is actually Ramondre Stevenson and Jerome Ford so let's just take a peek at those two players and so I'm going to go in position by position now I want to start out with the running backs though uh to me a lot of people are going to be paying up for Christian McCaffrey obviously that's going to be a very high scoring game that's going to be a, a very appealing game he is also someone that's kind of been matchup proof obviously if you can afford to fit uh CMC into your builds you probably should do that all in all though I don't know if we exactly need to we got Kyron Williams as a play that I don't mind now he does get a more difficult matchup going against the Cleveland Browns but guys he saw 22 opportunities in that game and he looked really good doing it like he you could kind of tell that he's been someone that was well rested you didn't tell that he was a guy coming back from injury so i do still like him as price tag obviously not as appealing as a low lower own play as 6.6 .6 last week in a smash spot that was very interesting that he wasn't chalk or too chalky i'd be fine getting there derrick henry is a play that i really thought was a great gpp leverage spot last week that held up to be true I still agree with that as a play this week. He's someone that I'm perfectly fine getting to this week as well. We continue on. But John Robinson gets a pretty good matchup going against the New York Jets. He's someone I think we're going to expect to get around 70% of the snaps and also get around 22 opportunities in this game. So he is someone I think we could also go to. And we're getting a bunch of options here that could easily go for 20 fantasy points this week, whether that be on DraftKings or FanDuel. They're both going to be fine plays for you. I do want to talk about Reandre Stevenson also in a pretty good matchup against the LA Chargers, who the Chargers are pretty banged up. This could actually be a closer game uh, than maybe what Vegas is thinking he obviously had a good game against the Giants a decent game against the Colts and then also a good game against Washington with Pop Douglas out who really is their only other good playmaker probably their best playmaker they're gonna have to restore the resort to getting the ball to Stevenson probably in the passing game which is what has happened a lot over the past month and in a plus matchup that's something I expect to continue again now is he a little bit touched on dependent sure but isn't basically every other running back play as well uh so to me he's another player at a cheap price tag or more cheap price tag that can give us 20 fantasy points this week so i'm perfectly fine getting to him as well and he's been the running back that i have been getting to the most and it's not a cap there guys you got devin singletary in a pretty good spot going against denver he actually had a work share workload last week which was surprising to me with pierce back but if singletary is going to get that involved in the past game and i'm not saying he's going to because well that was kind of a career outlier for singletary he hasn't been involved in the passing game that much but it's a high scoring game denver does give up a lot of production to opposing running backs also in the past him so he is someone at a cheap price tag that could also give us around 20 fantasy points and so this is my long way of saying that i think we want to be ending up on two running backs and that's i kind of haven't even touched on jerome ford uh you got checked down joe flacco there um jerome ford got seven targets in the last game that could actually happen again with joe flacco and he actually has been seeing uh, a consistent snapshot and has had a consistent point production now he seems like more of a safe play rather than like a gpp winning play i think if you're looking for more upside you obviously have uh jalen warren Najee harris i actually really don't mind Najee harris this week if you look at his like prop projections he's highly likely to score a touchdown one of the highest uh, running backs in terms of likely to score at any time touchdown which was surprising uh his rushing attempts was set at 14.5 yes he's kind of a zero in the receiving game that is a concern and that's where you could potentially just roll with Jalen warren hoping that Najee doesn't score a rushing touchdown because he's going to give you a few points and obviously i would say warren probably does have a bigger upside but all in all we have so many good running back and yeah it might be a slate in which it makes sense to eat the chalk again we'll, we'll show, show you guys the running back plays i just i don't know like rashad white to me isn't like a clear cut option now he is in a good matchup going against carolina i get that and if you guys want to roll with that i also get that to me it makes more sense to go other routes because those are all plays that have equally as good of upside i would think like stevenson much lower owned, like half the ownership of white and again i'm not saying white's bad on all you probably should eat the chalk but like you can get derrick henry at lower ownership that probably has one of the highest ceilings on the slate kyron williams yeah tougher matchup but he has consistently been what the second best running back in the nfl when he's healthy and we're getting him at eight percent like the match shouldn't really matter he's proven to be 
be an integral part of that offense. And so I do think we want to get to him. And that's just my point this week. Like even Devon HN not pulling in much ownership or Mostert, those are two high ceiling plays. And so in a way, like I, I think the chalk that we have is safe. At the same time, I think we have just as good a plays at low ownership. And I and I kind of just would rather get to those plays, I think. So go ahead and show you guys run, or quarterback. So quarterback wise, we have Wilson pulling in as kind of chalk. Uh, I kind of agree with that given the nature of the slate. Baker, a little bit, uh, not too high on. Like, I don't know, like quarterback this week is very difficult. And I'll say the last two weeks have been easy. I, we've cashed for seven straight slates right now, guys. Uh, that's including the showdown slates and the main slates. The last two main slates have been pretty, I don't want to say easy, but the line of path has been easier to figure out. This week, it is more difficult, okay? You got Jalen Hurts against the Niners. That is a high scoring game, but all in all, like, like, is he really going to get more of those one yard rushing touchdowns that eventually isn't going to happen I th that's starting to be an outlier just in the ways that they've been occurring yeah cj stroud seemingly in a high scoring game as well i don't know if we can get there as well like Tua makes a lot of sense but he's been tailing off a little bit obviously he's in a great match against washington you do expect him to have a good game in this game like you didn't expect him to have a good game against the jets uh kc you, you know you wouldn't really expect him to go off and so this is a plus matchup we have seen and he has proven time and time again that he's been able to produce and put up good points against opposing teams uh that are not that good but to me i'm a little bit shocked at the ownership for brock purdy he's been someone that in the good matchups maybe not against seattle didn't exactly have to do much in that game though right like this is a game that's projected to stay close he gets a phenomenal matchup going against philly at a cheap price tag and he's another one of those players that really has been a stud with the offense healthy with debo samuel healthy with George George Kittle with CMC all healthy and obviously I used to been healthy the whole season to me that's kind of the clear-cut obvious play at the quarterback position because more likely than not he's going to give us around 20 fantasy points and yes he's a little bit chalk at 10 percent, but honestly he probably should be the highest owned player on the slate now I do want to talk about Russell Wilson because he is projected to be the highest owned and the reason why Russell Wilson's probably projected to be the highest owned is going to be the matchup with Houston that is supposed to be a higher scoring game and he has been rushing the football a bunch that has raised his ceiling to make him kind of a safe play the issue is he's just really not throwing the football that much and so to me I, I just don't know how people are getting to him over Brock Purdy it might that kind of sounds weird but all in all I, I think that's correct and then from there I do want to mention like Bryce Young's kind of intriguing against Tampa Tampa's been a terrible defense obviously at 4.9 you're hoping for around 14 fantasy points and guys if he doesn't do this this week against Tampa probably need to start worrying a little bit maybe but obviously kind of a wash for him just you can give him an easy pass in the season with having basically no pass catchers but yeah let's go ahead and move on to the receivers obviously if we're playing Brock Purdy we probably want to get to one of his pass catchers uh in that regard I'd probably just be fine eating the chalk with who's ever the most highest own so i go ahead and take a peek at the projected ownership yeah tyree kill is definitely going to be someone that we should be trying to go out of our way to roster this week that is seemingly going to be the case tank dell it's kind of crazy like he keeps out producing nico collins even though nico collins has been now lower price uh kind of the better leverage spot i would say most people have been trying to get leverage on that that uh are sharper including myself and don't get me wrong i don't think this is biased at all like i've hyped up tank dell the whole season i hyped up nico collins the whole season Heck, I even got to CJ Stroud and best uh, and a bunch of best balls. I think most of you guys know that. It's just the way that like a lot of Tank Dell's production has come was like on these random deep balls that all in all he's making the plays on them. But you really, I don't know, like it just doesn't seem as sustainable as the way Nico Collins has been involved in a strange way. Now, both of them should be good plays. And I'm not trying to talk anyone out of Tank Dell. I would just say to me, Nico Collins still makes more sense as a lower owned option. And hopefully that will finally come true this week. Uh, from there, Corbin Sun pulling in chalk, obviously it makes sense if uh russell wilson's gonna be high owned corn sun's gonna be high owned now the issue with him is he just hasn't been getting that many receptions and to me there's so many other better plays that we can get to that aren't that high owned so let's just go through that list and so yes that receiver i do want to get to tired to kill going against washington like that is seemingly going to be a smash but i'm perfectly fine doing that Jalen waddle if you're not playing tyree kill i think you just need to get to him as well it does seem to be a one or the other and obviously if you're playing uh too well you could definitely just go ahead and play Jalen waddle this game does have a de decent stacking opportunity as well uh, Logan Thomas at tight end if you want to roll with that but yeah uh, let's talk about these three receivers right here because they are also in pretty good spots and this is where I'm like can we really get to tank Dell over these guys like Devonta Smith with Dallas Goddard out has been a stud really as expected uh, the data last season suggested that he does get a bump um, and he's really on a big bump this year compared to last year with Dallas Goddard off the field and they haven't exactly been smash spot matchups I'm not saying the Niners are either but I am saying 
maybe as the second weapon in this offense that he's going to get force fed the football a little bit more with Dallas Goddard out. That to me is something that is definitely appealing. And so I still like him at this price tag. I wish he was still a little bit cheaper. If you want to pass up on him to get to Brandon Ayuk, I also get that. The issue with Ayuk is very much touched on the pennant the last uh, three weeks, really. I mean, he had a really good game against Tampa, as you would expect. But last week against Seattle, that was a little bit concerning to only have four targets. Now, again, that game was out of hand fast. And so if this game is a shootout like it's expected to be, he is someone that you probably should be getting to. And then Michael Pittman Jr. going against Tennessee. He's been someone that's been getting an insane amount of targets. Even against Tennessee, where he didn't have a massive game. Last game, Zach Moss had a good game. Josh Downs had a good game. Uh, he still had 10 DraftKings points. So that wouldn't have killed you. Obviously, you're hoping for more 20 or so fantasy points. He is still going to be a good option on the slate. And we got Nico Collins still there. I think he's fine. Garrett Wilson is okay against Atlanta. You know, Tim Boyle is someone that seemingly is okay force feeding him the football uh josh downs is a play that some people are going to try to get to i'm okay with that greg dorch though like this to me is just kind of an obvious play especially if marquise brown is out we haven't got that news just yet even if brown is active we have seen greg dorch get about 80 percent of the snaps over the last couple of weeks with michael wilson out and that is something i expect to continue nine targets last week eight targets the week before that uh did bail out a lot of people last week with a late touchdown against the rams this is going to be I don't want to say a better matchup, but maybe honestly a better matchup. And if the targets are going to continue to be there at this low price tag, he is someone that I'm perfectly fine getting into, and he's someone I want to get to. Then from there, I will mention like Jalen Guyton did play a lot of snaps, had five targets in that game. If Keenan Allen is going to be banged up in any way, he's a player that I think can hold some very good upside. Like honestly, GPP winning upside. Even still, against the Patriots who are just so banged up, they're probably going to try to establish the run and just beat him on the ground game. But all in all, it wouldn't be shocking to see Jalen Guyton catch a long touchdown. Juju's someone that my God he's probably gonna have to get involved i don't i'm not saying juju is a good play but with douglas out they need someone to step up and then that's kind of it guys like i do want to leave open the receiver spot just because I, I don't see it as a big priority like i'm kind of fine ending up on whoever i end up on there defensively i did see that the panthers are going to be kind of chalk right now uh going against baker who it's weird like the stats continue to be there you're watching on film he, he just it doesn't look as good as what the stats are saying what the heist been saying now, i will say baker has been playing a little bit better as as the season has progressed but I, I also get why people would still like the panthers deep so that opens up some salary and then we look at tight end the chalk at tight end does have david njoku as the highest zone i don't know that seems weird like Jawan johnson definitely makes more sense definitely should be the highest owned player on the slate uh sam laporta just has such a huge target share it would make sense to get to him as well George in a good spot against Miami in a high scoring game against Miami that's a cheaper way to get some exposure to that game I could see him being higher owned Trey McBride if he's active against Pittsburgh might end up getting the most targets if Marquise Brown is out for that team so he's someone you could easily get to as well then Gerald Everett as well he's at a good price tag and so let's just go ahead and talk about all those plays and so again Laporte is in a pretty good spot George Kittle is in a good spot uh, do you want to call it with Dalton Schultz out we could be looking at Brevin Jordan a little bit for Houston like he is the min price he's the player that is expected to step up and play more snaps all in all, though, that's kind of why I like Nico Collins and honestly why Tank Dell is probably a decent play as well with Dalton Schultz out. And maybe that's why Devin Singletary is still involved in the passing game. But if you need to get there, you do. Like you like the rest of your lineup and you're looking for min price value tight end play. Yeah, definitely play him. I will say, I do think Jawan Johnson's going to be a good play. He's probably going to be the player I'm going out of my way to play the most. This definitely has some bias behind it, guys. At the start of the season, prior to the season, this was like my one bad best call. Uh, I shouldn't say one bad one, but again, a lot of you guys probably have been watching the channel the whole season uh hopefully before the season started you were able to take advantage of the best ball takes like telling you guys jordan loves basically a free square please draft him jake ferguson basically a free square please draft him and then nico collins was another one of those guys where i'm like he's going way too cheap he's their number one receiver please draft him and Jawan johnson was one of those players as well and all in all i don't know if that was exactly a bad take obviously he got injured didn't really get to get going and he has recently we saw seven targets from last week against the Falcons. That's with them all banged up. Chris Olave is going to be out. Michael Thomas is out. Uh, and Rashid Shahid is going to be out. And so with that, I think Jawan Johnson is going to be a good play. And I do want to point out receiver wise as well. I do think A.T. Perry is going to be one of the better receiver values that we have this year. And I don't take that lightly. Like week one, I mentioned Puka Nakua was going to be a good play. Obviously, that worked out. The next week, I was Tank Dell. I, I was talking up Douglas for a while. We have seen him play well. A.T. Perry is kind of just the natural next one to step up when the opportunity has come his way. I thought that would happen last week. It did not. Only two targets. Again, with all his pass catchers out, he's probably going to be the receiver number one. Maybe Alvin Kamara is. Don't get me wrong. Uh, that That's still not a bad running back play because he should get a lot of targets. But A.T. Perry 
if he doesn't end up with six targets, that just seems like a mistake. He was someone that stood out in the preseason. And to me, when I was watching it uh, in the game against Minnesota, if you had told me, or if I didn't know that Michael Thomas had gotten injured, I would have just thought he was Michael. At this stage of his career, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but all in all, too cheap. So I'm fine putting him there. And then you can see how easy it is to get CMC. And so again, like we have so much value, you could easily pay up a little bit more at running back. If you don't like Stevenson, don't have to play him. And you probably don't want to play two value running backs or two value receivers. So we could go out from A.T. Perry. I don't think, I don't know. I don't really want to get to CMC. So I probably am trying to get to one of these other running back plays. And all in all, you probably should just eat the chalk with White. It doesn't exactly correlate well with having the Panthers D, but I'll just eat the chalk for now. Receiver wise, you still have 7.8 left over. Maybe Jalen Waddle. I don't mind Brian Ayuk, but you guys can kind of see the lineup path coming together for this then. I would say if I had Brock Purdy in that quarterback, probably want to get to Ayuk. Then you could maybe pay up from Stevenson, although I don't know if that's the correct move. I, don't, I still like him. And that's kind of my issue with uh, White and even Moss. Like you could just play Singletary, Ward, Warren, Harris. There's just, there's a lot of good running back plays on this slate. But guys, that's going to be all. It's not as straightforward of a slate as the last two, but still a decent one. I'm not going to go as heavy as I have been the last two weeks. It's, you know, proceed with caution, but all in all, not terrible. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Let's have a good slate. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, and as always, let's keep cashing.